After a long and arduous trial, the best thing any attorney can hear is a judge or jury saying that an opposing witness's statements were full of inaccuracies. The witness was unreliable or the witness's statements were unconvincing. Based on my experiences as a professional private investigator, in most cases, each side will maybe have one or two, possibly three witnesses total. So the primary goal of the attorney in most cases is to effectively destroy the credibility of a witness during cross-examination, thus undermining the other side's arguments altogether. Whether you are a private investigator or a private citizen, you need to know how do lawyers do this? How do they tear apart the credibility of you, the key witness on the stand? This becomes even more vitally important for those cases where there is little to no physical evidence. There is no video evidence and no other witnesses. Let's now cover the top secret ways lawyers destroy a witness's credibility at trial. The first thing to watch out for is the mistaken witness theory. This is where the lawyer proves that the witness was distracted or he was focused on something else at the time or he may have been confused, not paying attention, or perhaps he wasn't able to fully see what happened due to obstacles or obstructions in the way. For an eyewitness to be a reliable eyewitness, then the witness's line of sight and sound must have been fully unobstructed. Most lawyers will jump at the opportunity to prove inconsistencies connected with any opposing witness. They are waiting, watching and listening for inherent inconsistencies in the witness's comments while giving testimony. These inconsistencies may be between what the witness said and previous statements given, or inconsistent comments between the witness and other witness statements, or inconsistencies with other evidence like documents, video footage, emails, texts, or other things. This video is sponsored by OREP Insurance and Working PI Magazine. OREP is a leading provider of private investigator liability insurance. Visit OREP.org for a quote today. Lawyers are trained to exploit the inconsistencies to show where the witness may be mistaken. A common exploit is to accuse the witness of bias in the case, Your Honor. The inconsistent statements this witness has made proves that he is unreliable and cannot be believed. He is at the very least mistaken about the account of events or he is biased toward the other side. That is the only explanation as to why his statements made here conflict with previous statements he has made, conflict with other witness statements, and conflict with the evidence provided. Honored members of the jury, it is quite obvious that the only true account of what happened is what has been stated by my client, the defendant, not by this witness. Another common thing that happens when attorneys are reviewing the evidence, going over all of the discovery in the case, is that a question the plausibility of the witness in totality. Sometimes attorneys will think to themselves, is this guy for real? Mr. Witness, according to your statement, my client, the defendant, struck the alleged victim in the face multiple times. Is that correct? And according to your statement, he hit the alleged victim square in the right eye and the nose. Is that correct? Well, Mr. Witness, the photos from the police indicate no black eye, no broken nose, no bruises on the alleged victim's face whatsoever. How do you explain your statements to the court based on that? The lawyer's intention here is usually quite clear here with a tone of questioning throughout the cross-examination. He is proving to the court that the claims from the witness must be exaggerated, are not to be considered as credible, and are complete and utter nonsense, thus fully discrediting the witness's recollection of events that he has stated. Now keep in mind, discrediting a witness's recollection can be done in multiple ways during cross-examination. First, the attorney may work with how much time has passed since the incident occurred. A tactic often employed is asking questions about other things that happened around the same time frame and try to get you to say you don't remember. Then the attorney can easily question how you can remember what you saw, heard, or experienced the day in question. They might also challenge a witness when it comes to drinking or drug use. In your statement, you say you drank a whole bottle of whiskey that night, isn't that correct? And you drank that bottle of whiskey over a four hour period, right? Now the attorney doesn't even have to ask the final question. He can just leave it for the jury to assume, but he will usually close it out with something like this. It would be safe to say then that your memories of that incident may have been affected by how much you drank that night, right? 
Now, most witnesses will flatly deny the fact that alcohol affected their memory or judgment or vision or whatever else, but that seed has been planted in the minds of every juror in that jury box. And any good attorney will also keep this testimony in mind to remind the jury later of the witness's response to discredit the memory of the witness in their closing speech. A huge mistake many people make when they have to take the witness stand is thinking they will take control of the situation. They have all the answers. They have practiced everything. They know exactly what to say and when to say it and how to say it. But the problem is that most attorneys will seize the opportunity to use this to their advantage. They will use tactics and questions like, so you remember the defendant hitting the alleged victim in the face, but you can't remember what they said that made them get hit. So you remember what color shirt the guy was wearing, but you can't remember if he was wearing glasses or not. So you remember seeing the guy in front of you hit his brakes, but you have no idea how fast you were driving? Attorneys will play on the witness's selective memory to make the witness become defensive and try evading the questions. Each time they get the witness to say, I don't know, or I can't remember, or get flustered, they are one step closer to discrediting that witness altogether in the eyes of the judge and jury. Another way they do this is to get the witness mad. Attorneys are very good at reading people. And if they see you might get mad, you are getting ready to cuss them out, you are getting ready to give them a piece of your mind, they will push those buttons even harder. An abusive witness, a witness who swears and cusses, a witness who threatens the lawyer or even shows a slight bit of uncontrolled anger during cross-examination is an easy target for a good attorney to discredit. I once heard it phrased this way, a bad witness is a mad witness. And one way to make a witness mad is to call them a liar. Now, most attorneys are not going to outright call the witness a liar, but they may use statements like this. So in actuality, you believed he should have been hit because of what he said, but suddenly you can't remember what he said. Is that correct? What you were really thinking is that no one would see these mistakes in your report, right? While calling out a witness and calling them a liar makes for great courtroom drama, it also can backfire very easily, and that is why few attorneys use this tactic unless it is the only thing they have left to defend their client. An attorney that is seen as being too mean, too aggressive, too out to get the witness can make judges and jurors question if he is the one that is really at fault and not rely on what he is making the witness say by the way he asks the questions or the tone and how he formulates those questions. In my experience, most trials, hearings, depositions, usually everything stays pretty civil for the most part. Attacks from the attorney on either side can be seen as overly aggressive and sway a jury's decision considerably. The biggest thing you need to keep in mind during cross-examination is to keep your cool. Think about your answers. Do not take anything personal. Be honest and ask for clarification whenever you do not understand something or if you need more time to think about the question.